Hurricane Barrel might be giving us some clues about where it's headed post Yucatan. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis back with you for an update on Barrel. Of course, we're thinking about everybody in Jamaica and through the Windward Islands that have already been impacted by Hurricane Barrel. Of course, the Cayman Islands, we're thinking about you as well and anybody dealing with the impacts from this storm. Yucatan Peninsula up next. Again, we're watching this for Cancun, Cozumel, the northern side of Belize for sure. Right now is of the 5 o'clock Eastern Time Advisor still packing winds of 110 miles an hour. And as we were talking about in yesterday's video, we would gradually see this weekend. Again, it's still a formidable storm. The pressure has now risen to 974 millibars. Again, when the pressure comes up, the wind speeds go down. The lower the pressure, the stronger the storm. Here is the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center. And we'll get into some of the clues that Barrel is giving us between what the modeling is saying and what the storm is actually doing in just one second. Stick around for that because it is eye-opening and very telling but first i just want to get through the uh, official forecast from the hurricane center and you see it there expected to make landfall right around the maybe cozumel area uh just south of cancun as we move into early morning tomorrow as a category one storm or a strong category as a category two storm maybe uh, weakening to a strong cat one either way a formidable storm coming your way into the yucatan peninsula we've been talking about this for days now uh, likely to weaken overland to tropical storm status for a time anyway. And then the official forecast has this regaining hurricane strength by the end of the weekend and making landfall somewhere in the northeastern part of Mexico or in southwestern Texas. So that is the official forecast. We're going to look at some of the modeling in just one second. But if you have noticed, and this is something we talked about with that steering flow with that big chunk of high pressure kind of eroding if you remember that that there would be an opportunity in, for barrel not to do this as was first uh was first looked at by a lot of the models but to actually come up into parts of central and maybe even northern texas and there's some hints anyway that that is actually starting to happen before we get into that i do want to show you the wind field here for our friends in cozumel and cancun especially maybe even the extreme southwest tip of cuba where we're getting in on some of the hurricane or some of the tropical storm force winds later tonight again this is moving basically right in that direction so the worst of this likely coming into Cozumel, into Cancun, because we are on the right side of the storm. Again, being on the right side of the storm always maximizes the impact. But again, that's what we're talking about for that uh, hurricane force wind gust to be about Let's see, that's about 43 miles wide. That's the my little ruler here that we can measure things up in real time. And then the tropical storm force winds in yellow extend about 215 miles across the entire thing. And again, that is going to be moving in a direction just like that late tonight and then into the early stages of Friday. In terms of the probabilities now, you see again... Uh, the worst of this is over for us in the Cayman Islands. So again, some better news there. Uh, but the hurricane force probabilities, these are sustained winds of hurricane force greater than 75 miles an hour. Uh, really, the probability there on the eastern side of the Yucatan and then into Cozumel. Again, just keep that in mind that the worst of this likely going to be on the northern side here of the Yucatan Peninsula. Note that we lose the probabilities here on the back end of the Yucatan and then over the eastern side of the Gulf of Mexico. That is going to be guys the eastern side of the western side of the Gulf of Mexico where barrel comes back out over water. Now you're going to notice the greens pop up again. That's going to be a low shot for hurricane force winds uh, coming back at us again as we uh, move towards northeastern Mexico and then southwest Texas. Okay, so for right there, we're going to look at uh, another our secondary weather computer here because there's going to be an interesting thing or at least some things when I was looking at the data just a little bit ago. What we have now, this is on uh, something a website called weathernerds.org and a lot of us watching this happen to be weather nerds, but it's a great site. So what I have here, I have the European ensembles. Remember, it's the different conditions put into the ensemble. Remember to make up and you get the mean of the European ensembles. Nonetheless, note that there's a spread here of a lot of these going south and then a lot of these going north with the mean of that right in the middle. So we're going to focus on the center. So there is the center of barrel tonight as of just before 8 o'clock Eastern time. And you notice that it is rolling right onto the northern side. We talked about this that 
as Barrel was kind of defying the odds and not falling apart with all the wind shear that it was encountering in the dry air that was trying to get itself into the center, that the stronger the storm, the more northerly it's going to go because it has a better opportunity to find that weakness in that high pressure that's hanging out over the southeast U.S. right now. So again, uh, it, it means that a lot of these members right now that are making the mean go a little bit more onto the Mexico side of Texas – you have to discontinue those because look at how far north and we're talking about these top three or four here um, rolling and notice the different peach colors here. And that goes to what I was just saying before that if uh, the storm was stronger, it would be more on the right side on, on the far right side. And if it was weaker where the green colors are down here and note the table on the left um, again, that would represent the weaker storm. And again, it's still a powerful storm tonight. So for that, I want to, kind of zoom this out a little bit take everything off these are the european ensembles that i just showed you here extended all the way out now for the life of this storm so if it were to stay on the northerly track we're talking about this coming close to cozumel which unfortunately it is going over the northern side of the yucatan so that is a little bit less time spent over land and then ejecting somewhere out over here and notice the northerly ones here come toward texas now the other thing to note is Note that these pink colors come back up. That would indicate a stronger storm. Well, the further north this storm ejects off of the Yucatan, the more water it's going to be over, the longer period of time it's over water before it gets to land. So a couple of things to note. I want to show you this. This is back on tropicaltidbits.org. And this is the hurricane wharf. So a lot of times... It is hot, meaning that it does overdo the intensity a little bit. But one of the reasons why we have this model is to find out it, do, it handles rapid intensification much better than global models because that's what it's designed to do. So notice again, there is uh, the storm coming just to the south there of Cozumel. I also want to show you something too. This I'm going to just fast forward to the 18Z. And it's even a little bit further north. I don't think this one goes out all of the way yet. So we're going to go back to 12Z, which is the morning model data run. But note what's going on here. So we see the pressure falling again. We're at the 968. So we're talking about a stronger Cat 2 hurricane. And then maybe, at least again, according to the H wharf, the hurricane wharf, a landfall somewhere right along the Texas Louisiana or the, the Texas Mexico border, excuse me, and a much stronger storm than is currently forecast. So if it continues to look like it's going to deviate to the right of the official cone, we're likely going to be looking at a stronger storm, and then also potentially getting this maybe anywhere from South Texas right along the border with Mexico, and then maybe as far north as. Galveston somewhere in there again so there's still a wide range of things that could happen we just have to see what that storm looks like after it gets out of the Yucatan and then it kind of lifts up and works its way through South Texas we were talking about this would be beneficial if it stays weak but there are signs anyway at least from some of the modeling here that uh, we might be talking about a stronger system so I do want to go back to the other weather computer and again just to show you We'll have to see what happens with that, but that would have to be upgraded, those percentages for hurricane force winds, if indeed some of those uh, hurricane models did come into fruition. So what I want to show you now is the actual water temperatures uh, in the Western Gulf. We did have Alberto and we did have uh, Invest 94L that became Chris and there were a lot of thunderstorms out there so it was helping to churn up some relatively colder air um, but we can take the temperature here and again close to the Texas coastline um, we have and then close to northeastern Mexico we're back into the mid 80s so most of the cooling was kind of right through here then down to the Bay of Campeche so if it kind of comes up like this or like this there's a lot of open water and a lot of untouched water from those two systems so we're i mean hoping that it stays over the cooler stuff not wishing a storm on anybody but the longer it's going to stay over that warmer water 
the better opportunity it has to get its act together again, unfortunately, and that is going to be something we are watching. Quickly, I wanted to touch on this for our friends in Puerto Rico and in the Dominican Republic. This is Invest 96L. Again, still battling some shear in the wake of barrel, thankfully, but we do have some rain coming through. There is an opportunity, a low end of opportunity for development as this disturbance that's right on the heels of barrel uh, gets into the Western Caribbean and then to the Bay of Campeche. But again, that is a very low opportunity at this point. Still, though, some impactful weather on the heels of uh, at least a Category 2 hurricane uh, coming into the Yucatan Peninsula as we get into the overnight hours tonight and then into your early Friday morning, July 5th. Alrighty, guys, I hope you found that helpful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to stay updated on the weather as we roll through the rest of hurricane season, and unfortunately, it does look very busy. We've, break, we've broken records already with barrel, and it looks like we're going to have another flurry of activity after... A little break. We're going to have a video coming out shortly to talk about what is likely going to be a decent break in the tropics. Again, we don't just talk about storms. I also want to make sure there's a sense of calm when there's nothing expected out there. So we're going to be highlighting that if you're interested in that. And when the next round of storms starts to come into the Atlantic, you've come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button and we will catch you next time.